Hi everyone, this is a video to show you in terms of preparing the data, how to treat open-ended questions that are, might be part of your questionnaire. So looking at three different coding approaches to deal with qualitative data that is collected as part of a quantitative instrument. The reason we deal with this somewhat differently is that in a questionnaire instrument, sometimes, well, most of the time, we are using a questionnaire instrument for quantitative purposes. So we need to convert qualitative data into quantitative. So the reason we might actually include qualitative questions is the fact that we are unsure of how to phrase questions in a way that is actually quantitative. And sometimes, uh, even though we might have done exploratory research prior to doing the, the questionnaire, we still are unsure of some of the answers we are looking for. So I'm just going to show you some examples of this type of questions in a quantitative instrument and how we deal with them when putting together our data set. So we have three main coding approaches. The first is when we have a single response and we have predetermined categories in which we will co then code those single responses. Then we have open responses, which we can then apply the qualitative analysis approaches that we've already discussed when we did the qualitative analysis techniques of content coding and um, grounded theory coding or analysis. And the third one is also for open responses, but this is when we are looking at the number of mentions of a particular issue. So the first one, when we have a single response and we have a predetermined categories in which we want to place those single responses. So what do I mean by a single response question? Well, this is a question that might say, is, what is your age as at your last birthday? So if someone tells you they're 54 years, we then have a um, predetermined categories of age of one being less than 18, two, 18 to 25, three, 26 to 35, so on and so forth. So when we have these predetermined categories, what we can then do is either when we in tell our data inputter to when we to input the data instead of typing in 54 years into the data set to then code in five instead of 54. However, what I actually prefer doing is simply entering in the ages that people give, 54, 18, 26, so on and so forth, and then doing a data conversion in my data set. What do I mean by this? So this is a data set I did for that comes from the Brumbies data that I collected as part of my PhD. And as you can see, I have inputted my ages that people have given me in this col in um, my variable here, and you know, 44, 64, 37, those sorts of numbers. If I then wanted to look at putting them into categories, I can then transform these. Um, ages into categories and how I do that is I go to transform and I tend to use recode into different variables. I just consider this to be safer because uh, it means that it preserves the original variable of age so I can always come back and do analysis on the ages that I, the raw ages that I have. So I select recode into different variables so it'll make a new column when it's finished. I go over here into this left hand side and I select age. And then I then need to tell it what I want to call the new variable. So I'm going to call it age recoded. So these are age categories. I hit change and then you see here it tells SPSS the original variable I'm interested in and the output variable that will be created. I then go to old and new variables down the bottom here. 
So because I'm dealing with a series of numbers, this is a, um, a bit different to other types of coding. So generally we will go from either using range or lowest through to a value. So because I have people who are under 18, I want to code them up as the lowest number that is possibly in this series of ages up until the age of 18 and I give that the value of 1. So I, I've selected range lowest through to 18 on the left. On the right, I give it a value of 1, and then I select add. I then go to, because from here up to the next ones, I'm dealing with beginning and end ranges. So I then go from 19 to 25. I then give it a value of 2 and I say add. I've got 26 through to 35 and this is value 3 and add 36 to 45. I give it a value of 4. I say add. I then got 46 through to uh, 50. Five, losing count, I uh, give it a value of 5, um, 56 to 65, give it a value of 6, and I say add, and then because I'm retirees, I'm putting all in one um, category, I then go to range, value through to highest, so then I want 66, so everyone from 66 and upwards will now be given the value of 7 and I add that. I will then select continue and say OK. So I will, it is, it just adds things to the end here. I'm just going to in variable view drag it up so it's easy to see what has happened with the coding. So as you can see, I've got my age variable here as the continuous series of numbers. And here on the right, I have my age recoded variable where my different respondents are now in different categories. So I can now do different types of analysis on age as categorical data um, than I could have with age as a, uh, a series of um, different age ages. So that is one of the methods of coding data. So we can use this if people give us um, ages, um, occupations, all sorts of things can be coded up in this way. If you, if you know the kind of data they're going to be using to answer the question, you can use predetermined categories in how you then recode the data into categorical data. So the second approach um, is the open response to category data and this comes from these categories are either ones that you have predetermined from a content analysis approach or the categories are built from answers which is the grounded theory coding approach. So I'm not going to review that again but an example of a question uh, that might be um, coded up in this way or used in this way in a survey is that in the qualitative analysis practice, as part of the grounded theory, I gave you a um, 12 respondents who had um, answered a question that was, what do you see as the reasons for the move from the publisher forum to the community built forum? That question could easily enough have come from a questionnaire and in anal analysing the answers, we could have done either approach. That was um, if you had a template or a coding frame in existence, we could have done content analysis. But what we did in class was a grounded theory analysis. So the third, main, third approach. So this sometimes when we're doing um, questionnaire research, what we're interested in is um, 
top of mind or men mentioning of certain brands or products or ideas and we're more interested in counting them. So for example, a question that falls into this category is name all the brands of sportswear that you can remember. So this is actually a, a, a recall test or a brand recall test that is often used in um, brand awareness quest, uh, surveys or in advertising effectiveness surveys. So what this uh, approach requires you to do is to, for, for the f first three brands that are mentioned, we code each, each um, brand that's mentioned um, as a new code. Then you can then count, uh, count them for the most mentioned brands, which we call a recall memory test. So what does this end up looking like? So, oops, wrong one, sorry, set up. So here we have data that I collected from some consumer behavior students in a, a, a last semester, I think this one came from. So as part of a class activity, they had to tell, um, fill in a, in a survey that basically said, name all the brands of sportswear that they could remember. So I have changed it to respondent ID rather than uni ID. So these are random, randomly assigned numbers. And here you see their responses to that question. So you see some people have um, only named one brand while others have named quite a lot. So this person and this person know a lot of brands of sportswear. So that's one level of analysis that can be done. You can count up the number of brands that people mention in total. However, what I'm going to show you here is how to count up the particular brands that are mentioned. So I'm doing this in Excel rather than SPSS, basically because uh, it's the way the data is formatted in Excel, it makes this an easier process. But once you have done this coding, you would then um, import it into your SPSS um, project data set and it would form, then become just part of your larger data set for the project. So I go to the first respondent and I've created these columns here, this is brand mention one, brand mention two, brand mention three. I've also created this set here, which is brand mention coding frame. So how does this work? Well, Nike is the first one mentioned. So I would type in Nike here and in brand mention one, I would give it a one. For brand mention two, it's Lululemon. So Lululemon, lemon, I always spelt this one wrong, becomes two and Lorna Jane becomes brand mention three. Then I'll go to respondent two and they've said Nike, so I would put in one. Respondent three has said Speedo as their first mention, so it becomes number four over here. Funky Trunks, I have never heard of Funky Trunks, but Funky Trunks now becomes um, code five and then we have Nike again so number one respondent four we have Nike number one Adidas it's not on my list so it needs to be added Adidas becomes number six and Reebok becomes number seven so I would then go down all of my respondents and I would code in the first three mentions of everything that they add while creating this coding frame on the right hand side here. So what this ends up looking like once I have done all the coding up it, is, it looks like this. So as you can see we ended up with for 110 respondents which is where I decided to stop. Um, we ended up with 33 different brands mentioned. I also created an other because somewhere in our data set, uh, someone uh, decided to put in uh, luxury brands rather than sports brands. Um, Louis Vuitton is not a sports brand, so I coded that as 99 other. 
it could be not I could make it more specific and say I could have a 99 which is other 90, uh, 98 which is blank um, 97 which is irrelevant so there's different ways of this other categories or these irrelevant or just not answering the question kind of data to be coded so I've, I've used 99 other as this catch-all so while I put the luxury brands in other there are some ones here that would be quite are quite questionable so Columbia I think it was supposed to be Columbia but who knows um, Rebel Sports is questionable seeming how that is a sports retailer rather than a sportswear maker in of itself so there's sorts of answers that you get in these kind of questions that require decisions to be made as to whether it's relevant and should be coded into this coding frame or whether it should be placed into other. So here we have all of the respondents. So how we then go about doing a count, I'm doing it in Excel just to make it quick. So I can do equals count if, I'm just going to do this first column to start with. Oop, here we go. All right. Count if and equals one. So we have 78 mentions of Nike as the first brand mentioned in this data set. So I can code this up here, delete those ones. So we have five mentions of Lulimon as the first mention. Um, no mention of Lorna Jane as the first mention, 18 of Adidas. So I can then do this again for uh, the second mention. Count if, select my range. I'm comparing it against that number in against the, the code it's being given and I select all the way down. So, so on and so forth and then I can do a sum at the end of all of the mentions of a particular brand and come up with a mention score. Mention. All right, so equals sum, select these three. So while Nike is by far the most, um, the brand that's most mentioned first, um, if you consider an Adidas is very far behind on first mentions, Adidas catches up quickly or is very close to Nike when later mentions are included. So in terms of what can we then interpret from this analysis, well we can identify the top five brands by mention or top five brands for a recall level of awareness. So these are top of mind brands. So this is this data here. As we can see, Nike is number one with 92% of respondents identifying Nike as within as a brand that they are aware of. 80% of respondents are aware of or can recall Adidas and 30% of respondents um, identified Puma. Then we have Lululemon, Reebok and New Balance making up uh, four and equal fifth in our top five brand awareness scores. So what, in terms of, for if you are a sportswear brand, when it comes to these kind of a, a scores, if you are not in the top three mentions of brands that people can recall, you are unlikely to be uh, chosen at a store or you're unlikely to purchase that brand. 
for most product categories this is true which is why we do these kinds of scoring so for instance if I am sketches or Dunlop I am a long long way down the the awareness scores in terms of um, consumer behavior uh, students awareness of those brands which is problematic if that is the target market in which I'm aiming for. So this is how we do an open-ended question coding approaches. So these are the three approaches that we use, the single response to a predetermined category. We can have open responses, co um, coding using qualitative analysis approaches, or we can use look at open responses using mention counting.